Hey, what's up? My name is Chris. This is the third in a short series on creating your own custom filter with just HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. This time we're going to work on actually a little bit of like UX uh, idea, which is when your page is loading, it's going to take, you know, a second or so, depending on the loading speed, to populate all this, parse it, and then put it in the browser. So we want to actually put a placeholder there so that it looks like it's thinking and loading and then it'll pop right in, which will make the whole site feel faster. And it'll also help with uh, kind of that jankiness of the whole site moving when stuff loads in. So you can demonstrate what this will look like here. If I come to the live code here at codinginpublic.dev and I come under the network tab, I can change this to a throttling like 3G or something like that. Now, if I close this down, when I reload, you're going to see a little skeleton loading animation. So I'll do that now. You see it comes in and then it pops in when it's ready. So that's what we're going to work on today. If you want to follow along and you haven't been coming along with me so far, you can come to the GitHub, look at lesson three, and go ahead and just download the code and then open it up in your code editor. That's what I've got here. And what we're going to do to start with is come inside this post container and grab the first article. All right, right here. So we'll grab this first article and then let's go ahead and remove the rest. I've copied that to my clipboard. Uh, let's see, that article's gone and one more. Okay, so we're just left with an empty post container. Now what we're gonna do is load this in with on-page JavaScript so that it's quicker, it doesn't have to go fetch it or anything like that. So we'll come down here and just add a script tag uh, anywhere here before the close of the body tag. Now we're gonna write a little uh, immediately invoked function. So it's gonna run as soon as it's read and we'll put it in parentheses for that reason. And this function is gonna be called load uh, skeleton like this. And then we'll actually two more parentheses on the outside, add our back ticks here, and that should work for us. So if I come in here and say console.log uh, hi, let's see if that pulls up here. Oh, I need to actually add parentheses here. Okay, there we go, hi. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create two variables here. We'll do a const called, uh, let's see, skeleton uh, CSS, and we're gonna set that to back ticks right now and nothing else. And then we'll say skeleton, uh, let's just call it skeleton like that. Below here, we're gonna say document.query selector, and we're gonna look for the post container like that. And then we're gonna set the inner uh, HTML to, we're gonna do an array here. And by doing an array, we can use some array methods. So we'll say skeleton, uh, skeleton, and then skeleton CSS like that, and then dot join, and then we'll join it on nothing here, just uh, empty quotation marks. What that's gonna do is create a string for us. And if I save this here, it's gonna create a large string with whatever's in here and whatever's in here. So let's go ahead and add our HTML inside this skeleton. That's on my clipboard. And now you'll see it pops up this way. Now, because it's the exact same thing, it's just gonna populate that. Um, but let's go ahead and do this. Let's Because this is just a string, we can actually use a repeat uh, method here and we'll just repeat it three times and that will give us three of these uh, areas. Now, what we're gonna do is replace this here with some extra um, some stuff. So we're going to leave a lot of the same styling. So a lot of these classes will all stay the same, but I'm going to go ahead and remove things like names, like Angular. We'll have two post tags that'll make it look a little bit more natural. I'll remove the date, but leave the tag there. Uh, let's see, let's remove all this. We just need the H3. For post author here, let's change this to a div rather than an image. Uh, we'll remove the source then and the alt tag, and we'll finish this off with a closing div. And let's see what else we need. Let's remove the name of the author. Let's also remove uh, future markets executive, which is the role. And then we'll remove all this body here, uh, right here. So all the inner text of the body, but we will go ahead and add, let's change this to a div and um, just to kind of keep the semantics right. And then we'll come in here and we're gonna have a paragraph tag. So with a class of skeleton like this, and then we'll close this off. It won't have anything in it, but we're gonna use that to kind of create mock uh, HTML here, or those lines. So I'll go ahead and copy that down several times. Let's remove the text here. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this skeleton class and we're gonna add it to each of these areas. So I'm gonna click there and then I'm gonna hold down the option key and let's see, click inside the small. No, not inside the small, let's remove that. So if I click again, it'll actually remove that uh, inside this class. Here we go, and then here. Uh, inside this class, inside the date class, uh, inside both of these, and I think that's it. Oh, let's see, we also want this avatar. Oh, let's click there, 
right inside there. Okay, so we're gonna paste that skeleton class in each of those in a space. And right now it's not gonna do anything, but we're gonna use the skeleton CSS to style that, adding some additional styles. So I'll add a style tag here. And the first thing we're gonna do is just style that class of skeleton. So we'll have a background color, background color here of our HSL var, and then this will be accent one. And if you don't know why I'm doing it this way, go ahead and watch the last video. I set up a lot of the CSS that way. And if I save it here, you'll see it all changes to that color. Next time we want, we want them to all have a border uh, radius of five pixels. And then we're gonna have an animation that kind of animates all of those colors across. So the way we're gonna do that is to say animation, and we'll have 650 milliseconds here for the length of the animation, uh, linear, infinite, so it's just gonna keep going. And then we'll do alternate, and we're gonna name it skeleton uh, loading, like that. So let's copy this name here because we're gonna need that on our keyframes. So at uh, keyframes like this, use that name, and then we can set different states. So we're gonna start at 0%, and at 0%, let's go ahead and just copy down this background color because we're gonna use that. And I guess we don't really even need this background color. So we'll say background color here like this. And this first one is actually gonna be accent uh, two, like this, and then let's remove the opacity. We're gonna copy down one more time here, and we're gonna say the next one needs to be at 100%, not 1,000. Let's do 95, all right, 95%. We're gonna do accent one of like 0.2, something like that, all right? So now it's actually gonna rotate like that. Now we're getting some weird jankiness. Let's see, infinite, alternate. You may not know what to do with this 100%. Let's keep this to 100, maybe that was the problem. All right, yeah, there we go. So now it's just, looks like it's kind of loading something in there, which is what we want. Now to give these things more realistic appearance, we, we need to make a few other changes using the skeleton class, but we'll have other selectors as well. So let's come, I guess, right inside here. So we're gonna say we want the dot skeleton dot post tag. You know, I don't even think we need the dot skeleton. We're just gonna name these uh, as their normal classes are. So these are the tags themselves. And then the post uh, author role, we'll do the same thing for that one. All we're gonna do is set some basic kind of default. So we want the height to be uh, 20 pixels and the width to be 70 pixels. If I save it here, you see they start to look like their actual you know, text or whatever. We'll come down here and let's go ahead and copy this down here. And now we're gonna want the post uh, date. So date and then the post author, not role this time, but name. And then we're gonna set these to something a little bit different. So we'll have 28 pixels of height. I just kind of played around with these numbers until it looked I don't know, semi-realistic. So I'll save it and it'll pop in like that. And then let's copy this down here. So we're gonna change one more thing on this post author name. It's got that uh, title below it. So we're gonna say margin bottom of 10 pixels. So it gives a little more spacing there. We've also got the post header. That was the actual title. So post header like this. And uh, we'll set this to be a border radius of zero, because you can see it's got that curl to it. We don't want that, we want it to go all the way across. And then we'll set a min height of 120 pixels. It's usually a little bit bigger like that, so I figured that'll help it look like it's actually loading some real data rather than just uh, a fake animation. We're gonna come in here and we want the post uh, author avatar now. That's that div now that has the class for the image. We're gonna set the border uh, radius to 50% like that. And then we'll do a width of uh, 55 uh, pixels, and we'll do a height of the same. So height right here. If I save that, and now it looks kind of just like our image, except there's obviously nothing in it. Now you might remember we added all these paragraph tags with a class of skeleton, but they don't have any height to them right now. So we're gonna say we want the post a body, and we're just gonna grab, um, let's see, all the skeletons inside there. So skeleton like that. And we want these to all be a min height of 18 pixels and then a margin bottom of 10 pixels. That will space them out, space them out like that. And now they kind of look like real text uh, sitting up there waiting. All right, let's go ahead and do the button and then we'll do a couple things to make it look a little more realistic. So we'll say we want a min height here of 50 pixels and a min uh, width of 190 pixels. That's the button that goes across the bottom of the page here. You see some of this spacing's a little bit odd. We were gonna clamp it at four anyhow. So we probably don't need this many skeletons, uh, something like that. And now we're not getting it clipped. Um, and then let's see, what else should we do to make this a little bit more realistic? Let's take this post body skeleton like this. 
and let's look at the last of type. So the last in this row here, we're going to set uh, to a width of uh, 80%. So if I save that here, it'll actually kind of clip it and it looks a little bit more realistic. Let's do the same thing up top here. We're going to go to the post tag. And so that these tags up top aren't the exact same, uh, let's say, let's see, down here, the post tag, and then we'll do a uh, last of type. We'll do a width of like 110 pixels, something like that. So this second one looks a little bit longer, uh, and now that should load in fine. So what we've done here is we've got this kind of animation waiting for the JavaScript to now populate with the real data. And again, that's a real UX UI improvement, both for the look of things, it actually tells the user something's happening, and then also it doesn't make your page jump around like crazy uh, when they come to it. So if I refresh here, it just immediately starts animating through that and it'll keep doing that until we load in the live data, which is what we're gonna do next time. So stick around and we'll do the final video here on this filter. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Happy coding.